Barletta. Thank you. I'm uh, probably not one of the last uh, people you want to speak to right now because my family was in the construction business, asphalt and concrete. <clears throat> you know, when people ask me about Washington, uh, I have a common phrase I, I usually say is that uh, common sense is not so common in D.C. And uh, this hearing is, uh, is pretty interesting because it reminds me of one we had last week about a rule. And I had a big problem with the rule. It was with HHS and Secretary Sebelius tried to defend a rule that anyone under the age of 12 could not qualify for a lung transplant that you had to be 12 or older, in spite of the fact that the little girl that I was advocating for was 10 years old. She had approximately three weeks to live. Her doctors at Children's Hospital in Philadelphia said that they could take an adult lung and modify it. This girl would have a good chance of living. However, the secretary defended the rule that you needed to be 12. And we were OK with letting a little girl die because she was only 10. Now, I know this hearing is not at the same level as, as that, but it reminds me of that, that this is not practical. I understand what you're trying to do. My family was in the concrete business, was in the asphalt business. I had a line painting business where our drivers would drive two hours to, to a job site and sit on a job site and wait before we could paint the lines. When you're dealing with short haul or businesses like in asphalt and concrete and line painting, and there, there are many others, the rule, if it doesn't make sense, and we don't have the scientific data to claim that it's going to make anything safer, why do we do it? Why can't, why can't Washington sometimes just use practical, everyday common sense and still try to achieve the goals of making our roads safer? I'm, you know, I, I offered an amendment to keep heavier trucks, triple trailers off the road because I had a problem with safety, so um, I understand what you're trying to do, but it just doesn't make sense for so many businesses. Congressman, I appreciate your comments, and I, and I think uh, I joined so many in being impressed by the advocacy you exercised um, that saved that little girl's life. And I would suggest that today's hearing is just as significant because you're talking about 4,000 lives. In the case of this rule, 19 But, but do you have scientific data to back that up? Absolutely. And the that the 30-minute rule, the, the actually, 30-minute break. 30 30 break. break, yeah, absolutely improves the, the ability of that operator to operate more safely, to minimize the risk of any kind of cumulative fatigue with that quick 30-minute break. They're more alert behind the wheel. Uh, they're more ready to respond if someone does. Uh, well, how do they, I, 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 guess, I yeah. guess I just can't understand how they could, how they can do that study when you're delivering asphalt, you're driving the truck, then you're getting in line, waiting to, to back into the paver, drivers sitting there. How, how, I just don't understand how they assess a 30-minute break when there may be periods of breaks throughout, throughout the day of every day. It's different. How did, how did they accomplish that? Well, it sounds as though we're not that far apart. It, it, certainly, I've watched many a construction site. I've certainly been around a lot of construction folks. And, and you and Mr. Hinkle both identify the number of breaks that operators are taking just by virtue of the, the cycle and the schedule and moving product quickly and moving it fresh um, and then going back for more. They're, they're, I don't think we're that far apart in understanding how those breaks work in that operation. And that's, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure where else to go on that point, other than, again, to reinforce. But how does another 30-minute break, based? when there may be periods of breaks throughout, throughout the, the course, how does another 30-minute break increase the safety? It's not another. It's taking advantage of existing breaks they're already taking. It's the simple fact that the break itself improves the safety performance of that operator after the break, within that first hour after the break. 
So even so, if they've had four 30-minute breaks during the course or five 30-minute breaks, adding another 30 minutes? They don't need another one. They only need one. They only need one. Under this rule, they only need one within the 14-hour workday. And it's got to occur sometime before that operator gets behind the wheel after the eighth hour of work. Just, just one under this rule. So if these are already doing four, if your guys were doing four, my gosh, they're way ahead of the curve, and they're probably much more alert as a result of that. So if they're just sitting alongside the road uh, waiting to, to unload into the paver, if, how, how do you enforce that? How, I mean, how do you enforce that? They're, they're not keeping a log, so how enforceable is that? That's the challenge. gets back to, to Major Savage's point. In, in, the, the enforceability generally uh, comes through compliance reviews, in this case, until we have electronic logs in place. Now, in the case of those operators, because, again, you're right, they're not keeping logs, they need to measure it within their normal timekeeping system. Well, how would you enforce whether or not somebody complied or not? I mean, there's no record of whether or not, so basically it's up to the driver to say, I didn't have a 30-minute it could be it could be driver interviews. It could be uh, you know. Uh, How else other than that? How else yeah. other than that? If there if there isn't a log, yeah. could you determine whether or not they had the 30-minute break or not? Other than the driver, how else could you determine? Well, again, I mean, Mr. Savage can speak to it because he spent a lot of time doing compliance reviews and more uh, inspection work. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Congressman, there's two ways that I would suggest we could enforce it. One would be to provide the enforcement officer with the ability to enforce it by giving, making a requirement that they keep supporting documents on the vehicle to confirm that the driver may have taken the time off. And the other thing is to increase enforcement uh, through the MixApp program, which is a particularly effective program, and making sure the states are fully funded so that they can do the, uh, the, the, good, the good work that the officers are doing on the road. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair.